Do you like to punch things, or does the thought of crushing something into dozens of teeny tiny little pieces with four fingers and a thumb clenched into a ball rattle your jellies? Well, if it does, then stick around, because you'll probably enjoy this build. Also, please keep in mind that the footage taken in this video is about two days old, and since then my power has jumped up by six or seven points. So even though my power is at a 948 right now, it was indeed at 941 while this gameplay footage was being taken. I'll be sure to provide damage calculations. Okay, now that all of that is settled, let's take a journey through my incredibly disorganized inventory. Realistically, I don't even know half of what's in there. It's a lot like my closet or the underside of my bed when I was a kid. Actually, a change of plans, let's take a look at our skill trees first. For this one, we're going to be using the Way of the Warrior Tree. For all you new players that just jumped into the game when it went to Steam, I will give you a very brief explanation. You have four abilities, three of them that tie directly into one another, and one that modifies your cast, which isn't really all that relevant right now. Combat Flow recharges your dodge roll on melee kills, Combination Blow triggers health regen and increased melee damage that stacks on itself three times, and lastly, Deadly Reach is triggered by Combination Blow and it increases your melee range. These abilities are key to what we're doing here, and I'll explain why in a minute. Also, don't forget to put on Gambler's Dodge, that'll recharge your melee attack if you roll near an enemy. Next, we look at armor. We begin with Liar's Handshake. Take a look at its perk, Cross Counter. Using your Arc Melee ability or being hit by a melee attack will allow you to follow up with an extremely powerful melee counterattack that will heal you. The damage this thing can push out must not be understated. It is the end-all be-all of Brass Knuckles, and I imagine it feels a lot like getting slapped by God himself. It delivers a unique damage multiplier that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. For your first weapon, any shotgun of your liking that has one-two punch, simply because if all pellets hit the target, it increases your melee damage. I recommend the newest Lunar Shotgun one small step. It's equivalent to the Badlander, but it sits in your kinetic slot. Which makes it better, because, I mean, it, well, it, it's, it's kinetic. What more do you want? For your secondary, you'll need something for mob density, such as an SMG or an auto rifle. I recommend Subjunctive, the Recluse, or any auto rifle that comes with a damage buff or demolitionist, simply because this is a low discipline build. Don't forget anti-barrier slash overload rounds, because your fists cannot break immunity barriers. Believe me, I have tried. Something that drops with multi-kill clip is incredibly handy for moments where bashing heads in simply is not an option. Moving on. For your heavy slot, you'll need something that can crowd clear. Anything with auto-loading holsters, such as this rocket launcher on screen, will do the trick. Ambitious assassins slash cluster bomb are also really, really helpful. For armor mods, if you're using an SMG, put an enhanced SMG loader on your gauntlets along with an impact induction. You'll be doing an incredible amount of punching, and even with its internal cooldown, it will still generate enough grenade energy to keep you from wanting. Also, make sure that you have Thunder Coil on your cape. We'll talk about damage multipliers here in just a moment. Lastly, before we go any further, don't forget to spec into a physical stat. Resilience is by far the most beneficial because it increases shield capacity as a general stat. And if you spec into something like minor resist or major resist, you'll only receive damage resistance against those specific types of targets. It's kind of dumb, but whatever. Now, everybody's stats will be a bit different, but yours should look similar to this by the time you're done. Anywhere from tier 6 to 9 resilience will serve you well, with a tier 4 in strength and a lower tier discipline. Recovery isn't really an important stat, as each charged melee will heal you, but if you can manage it, tier 2 to 3 mobility will provide you with enough extra speed to keep targets on their toes or let you jump outside of an AoE attack. Now that we've finished putting all of this together, let's take a look at the meaty part of this video. For the sake of easy numbers, we're going to use the EDZ in this first example, specifically the Atrium. At 948, a Hunter melee attack by itself will hit for 378 damage. Combination Blow stacks on itself three times, so your damage will rise in accordance with the 1.6 multiplier. You'll hit 378 with no stacks, 604 with one stack, 966 with two stacks, and 1545 with three stacks. When you put Thunder Coil on your class item, a times 1.497 multiplier is added to your melee damage output. As a result, your initial melee attack with no stacks of Combination Blow will hit for 566, the following 906 with one stack, 1449 with two stacks, and lastly 2318 with three stacks. This knowledge is essential because we're about to add Cross Counter into the equation. By itself, Cross Counter will hit for 1132. 
It hits for 1811 with one stack, 2897 with two stacks, and 4635 with three stacks. When you add Thunder Coil into the equation, you still get the 1.497 multiplier on top of that. Now, your first cross counter will hit for 1698, 2716 with one stack, 4345 with two stacks, and 6952 with three stacks. Using the one two punch buff, you'll even hit for a total of 8342. So let's sort these numbers out. Thunder Coil adds a 1.5 times damage buff. Combination Blow adds another 1.6 buff three times on top of that. Cross Counter adds a 4.492 buff on top of the previously listed buffs. And if you're quick, you can get an extra 1.2 times buff in there with 1-2 Punch. That's three stacking buffs, and four if you're quick on your toes. I told you that shotgun would be important. So the next question is, how do we use all of these together? Well, a lot of it has to deal with timing. There are two different ways to proc cross counter. You can either get punched or you can punch something and the following melee strike will be a cross counter. You can hit a cross counter without a charged melee attack and it will still deal extensive damage, but you have to be careful. You can't just run head first into everything and begin smashing heads in. A lot of this is like flipping multiple switches on and off. So, when you hit a target, you'll trigger cross counter. If you're too quick, cross counter won't proc and you'll miss a damage opportunity. If you hit too late, you'll miss it again. If you accidentally hit something else in all of the fray, you miss yet another chance, so on and so forth. Cross counter will only proc for every other melee strike unless you're struck first. If you're too slow with one two punch or you miss a few pellets, you're gonna miss yet another damage chance. It's important to remember just how fragile buff stacking with this build really is, or you'll constantly find yourself without a cross counter and you'll get pummeled into the ground. It can be a bit tricky to get all these buffs active at a single time, and even more difficult to manage them and use them effectively. So a good rule of thumb is to prioritize what targets are going to be dealt with first, and handle them accordingly. If all else fails, your weapons are there to be used, so use them. In some situations, melee attacks just aren't really viable. That's why you have a shotgun, an SMG, and a rocket launcher. Now when you're dealing with a boss, it's important to remember that you aren't simply going to kill it in a single punch. It might take a few, but only a few. This is where your resilience mods come in handy, providing you with extra shielding when things get real dicey. And if you're running in fist blazing, believe me when I say that things will get dicey. I find that stacking buffs in a single line is what helps the most. Cross counter is going to proc regardless of what you do, whether you get hit or you punch first. So take them one at a time. Build up combination blow with surrounding adds and then go in for the boss strike. Whack him once, pump a shell in its chest, and whack him a second time and you'll see a massive damage increase once cross counter and one two punch proc together on top of thunder coil and combination blow. I hope I was able to show you a new way to play this game. Believe me when I say that there are many more build videos coming in the immediate future, so stay tuned for those. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Also, for those of you who made it all the way to the end of this, I have a little something for you that I think is pretty cool. So I like out-of-bounds type stuff. I thoroughly enjoy breaking video games as much as I enjoy playing them, and I thought this was pretty neat, so do exactly as I'm doing here on screen, and you should find yourself in a pretty sweet spot that you aren't necessarily supposed to be. You're welcome. J-Boy out.